Welcome back to that Leslie Sound series. We have some new pedals for you. Today we're talking about alternative ways to get that Leslie sound. We're going to talk about pairing pedals together, pairing a pedal with an amp, all kinds of ways to do it. Right. So I mean, this episode was a long time in coming. So mm-hmm. back in the first round of that Le- that Leslie sound, if you go back and look at the comparison guide, mm-hmm. which is up here in the cards, and if you want to know what a Leslie simulator pedal sounds like, <laughs> look at the comparison guide. Mm-hmm. Um Near the end, there's some links, you know, there's some actual clips of some of these pedals that we're going to have on the day in preparation for this. And it says coming soon, I think. And it's been like that for about a year. <laughs> um, it's expanded a little bit. Yeah. I haven't counted how many pedals are in front of us, but it's gotten a little crazy. So we're going to dive into it. How, how can we get that Leslie sound without using a Leslie or without using a Leslie simulator pedal? Right. Disclaimers. Nothing sounds like a Leslie in the room. Right. Right? We're just going to throw that out in the beginning. We know that. You know that. Everybody knows it. Dan and Mick know that. (laughs) Yeah. Nothing sounds like a Leslie when you're sitting in the room with it. Disclaimer number two. We've talked about this and feel probably most people, whether they're playing at home or they're playing, you know, on, you know, in clubs clubs or on the the road or they're at church, wherever they're playing, Mm -hmm. are probably using one app. Not using a wet dry wet mix or something like <laughs> mm-hmm. that. So we just we we're like, well, let's keep it simple. Let's see if we can get a good sound, one amp. And so we're using the Tyler JT22 through the whole video. Mm-hmm. A couple of these pedals are stereo. We could have probably widened it up a little bit, but could have. didn't. We wanted to keep it simple for a change. <laughs> right. Um. So I think that that's the disclaimers, right? Yeah. Okay. So with all that being said, in the comments after you've watched the episode, tell us which one you like the best and tell us what you think we might have missed. Like what have you paired together in the past to try to get that if you've gone down this path before. Okay. That's what we're asking you to do is your homework. All right. So let's jump into it. The pedals. Yeah. yeah. Number one. First pedal for me uh, years ago, I wanted to get the Leslie sound. Mm-hmm. And I had a microvibe from Voodoo Lab. And we've talked about this before on other episodes, and I've played the same riff before on other episodes, so I'm not going to say anything else. Here's my attempt at making a micro vibe sound like a Leslie. <laughs> All right, so that's the micro vibe. Next, and right now we're looking at just one pedal. Is can you take right. one pedal and get that Leslie what sound? About one pedal with one knob. <laughs> one pedal with one knob. Oh look, the MXR micro chorus. If you turn it all the way up and then back it off just a hair, you can get a nice fast Leslie. Now, both of these examples are fast Leslie's. Right. You're not going to get a nice slow Leslie out of it. You're going to get a Univibe sound. You're going to get a chorus. But check it out. So that was the MXR micro chorus, which I think I referred to at one point as the kindergartner version of, of a rotary pedal, one, one knob. Uh, moving on to uh, something purple, 
from our uh, our buddy Josh Scott. It is the JHS Emperor version two, which is based on an old Arian pedal that uh, I think Josh goes on to say that a lot of the uh, studio guys would use to try to emulate a Leslie. And so he built this and then he has a tap expression on the side. We use an expression pedal and he has the heel preset to the slow Leslie and the toe to the fast Leslie. There's nothing in between, it goes fast and slow. I played it, it sounds like this. So that was the JHS Emperor. Josh has been really helpful to the show. Talked about how you could use it as a, as a Leslie, and there it was, uh, how, mm -hmm. and how he set it up. Uh, so now we're going to jump to pairing two pedals together. So it was suggested that you could use uh, Tremolo, which here we have the actual prototype of the TL Pedals Tremo pedal, and here we have the Mojo Hand RVT. So we have this set for the vibrato, this set for the Tremolo, and that's what it sounds like. Thank you. RVT set to vibrato. Right. So not tremolo to tremolo. We'll talk more about that later. Right. For my first pairing here, I had Pat's Ultra Vibrato UV300. Right? The Behringer Vibrato pedal. Mm -hmm. And so we pair this with the Dunlop Tremolo Volume Plus. We paired the lightest pedal with the heaviest pedal. Right. And which is kind of cool if you think about it because one of the things you want is that ability to change speeds. Yeah. And so by using this, we can do that. We could change speeds and probably could ramp a little bit more if we had it on the floor or whatever. Right. But this is my first one. It sounds a little bit something like this. a theme here <laughs> but you should be we're in all these pairings you're going to see a tremolo pedal right. with another type of modulation right all right so uh the first one was, that i did was a vibrato first one you did was a vibrato right this is a chorus pedal from tc electronics this is the third dimension chorus looks very similar probably you know i'd really like this this pedal is so good how and good is it? It's so good. I would like to try the boss because oh, yeah. they say the boss is better and this is so good. Of course, you only have two kidneys, so you're not going to be able to try the boss. Maybe the Wazacraft. The Wazacraft yeah, one, sure. So I paired this with the Empress Tremolo. And I want to say something about this Empress Tremolo before we move on. Um, you'll notice in the clip I reached down and I hit the tap button. Well, this can be tap or preset. So we actually were using an external tap to tap in the tempo. And then had two presets on different subdivisions. One's fast, one's slow. Hit that. We flip between 
presets and it ramps between presets. And we probably could have set that ramp up to take a little bit longer or whatever. Uh, but this is actually one from my board and I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you didn't want to program to unprogram to reprogram. <laughs> right. So here you go. The Emperor's Tremolo and the Dimensions Third Dimension. <laughs> And so the final potent pairing for me, I went back to the MXR micro chorus because I really love the way it sounds, but when you slow that, it becomes a chorus. Mm -hmm. And so we were wondering, well, could we get some more control over speed if we paired that with a tremolo? And so I picked one of our favorite tremolos to go with that. This is the DLS um, tremolo stereo, I guess. Just tremolo, yeah, right? right? Tremolo. Dave doesn't mess no, around. No, does not. <laughs> so tremolo. Uh, like I said, one of our favorite ones. You've had this on your board for quite a while now. Um, we're able to use the tap tempo to speed it up and slow it down. And you'll notice I start with the MXR slow, this slow, mm -hmm. reach down, speed up the MXR, and tap this in faster. And I got Pat going on a whole thing after we did that. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> Switching gears slightly, we're still going to pair something with a chorus, but we're not pairing another pedal. We're going to pair an amp. So what if you just had one type of pedal that you want to have for modulation? You could use your amp if you have tremolo. In this case, the Tyler JT22S tremolo, which I believe we featured at one point when we kind of ran through the amp. Yeah. So we paired it with the Swindler FX Golf Chorus, and we used the, the, the throb on the amp, and then we smoothed it out with this chorus. I think I just stole some thunder for a later part, but here we go. So that was the golf course paired with the Tyler, and the tremolo on the Tyler was set pretty fast. Pretty fast. And pretty, the depth was up pretty high. So moving on, we're going to go to something totally different, and we must uh, have a break to... This is a, a Phase 90 that I have that I don't remember where I got it. I know I didn't pay much for it, but look. I have the box. Not only that, <laughs> an unfilled out warranty card, the owner's manual, and a sticker. 
He's very proud of that. I am very proud of that. Because <laughs> I probably paid like 30 bucks for it. But so now we went into a different phase. <laughs> we paired it with a phaser. Uh, and the phase 90, another one knob wonder from MXR. And we paired it with a Tyler. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like this. So a little bit different than the choruses, but still sounded very Leslie-esque, which is the goal here. So moving on to my final pairing with the amps, we have the Jam Pedal Harmonious Monk, which is a Dan and Mick's signature pedal working with jam pedals, and we paired that. So now this was our first tremolo to tremolo, but we used the um, harmonic tremolo. We found mm -hmm. that worked uh, for this particular application, and it sounds like this. So basically, we sat down tonight, we picked up a whole bunch of different modulation pedals, right. and we're like, how can we get it to sound kind of like a Leslie? And I think in some cases, it was pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe it was pretty close to sounding like a Leslie Simmonider. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, but, right. Um, you know, in a band situation, if I was playing live, I would be pretty happy with some of those mm -hmm. um, filling in the gaps. And I have found that a, a chorus and a tremolo pedal together can do a really good job of that. Right. So we wanted to see chorus tremolo, phaser tremolo, vibrato tremolo. The only one that we probably didn't do We, we weren't successful. Oh, flanger, right, right, right. Because we have one between the two of us, and we didn't think that far ahead when he was out grabbing gear. Uh, we didn't grab my um, TC Electronic, the chorus uh, modulation flanger in a box with a hard-wired cable. I think it's called a plus, or I don't know what it's called, but right. yeah, that, that would be the only flanger we had. I had a boss one at one point, but I sold it. So maybe flangers are a fact that we need to explore a little bit. Right. <laughs> because we don't have, with all these pedals, we don't have one between us. Um, last night, I spent some time reading online, like looking for ways to do this. And I didn't find a whole lot. You know, some people talking in some forums and stuff. And one of the recommendations was a tremolo pedal into an amp with tremolo. And if you didn't have an amp with tremolo, it was two tremolo pedals. And we played with that a good bit. Yeah, we struggled because I think what we what we think we learned going through this was that we felt like the tremolo gave you the Doppler effect. That gave you that pulse that really made it sound like you had something going in, around in a circle. And we could not find... We tried to have the amp fast and then turn the other tremolo down. We got away from square waves, triangle waves, tried to go to sine waves. We tried everything and we just found, in our experience, they were fighting each other. It didn't sound very right. natural. It sounded like a Leslie speaker that was off axis. You know, it just didn't want to smoothly. They didn't play nicely together. So, And even the harmonic experience. tremolo with the tremolo was a little, it took us a while. We finally got to a point where we were like, okay, maybe. We got close, but we're still like, man, it's just... Yeah. The other thing I think we learned is fast is easier than slow. Yes. Right. So if you want to, you know, and a lot of people always like, well, the slow Leslie is what I like. Well, you know, if that's what you really like, then definitely some of the simulators that are out there yeah. are probably worth it because it's harder. Although there was a couple times where we had slow ones that we, we thought, that thought were pretty good. So the big question is, which ones did you like? Which one was close? Were we off on all of them? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Are you still watching at this point? Yeah. Um, what would you do different? Do you have any suggestions of things we should try? Or 
do have a way that you do it. And we'd love to see that, you know, we'd love for you to share that with us. So, um, maybe you could record us a clip and send it to us or something Please like do. that. That'd be awesome. With that, we always like to take a moment and thank everybody that's been watching, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, hitting the like button, leaving comments down below, um, going out to Instagram or Facebook. Anytime you interact with the show, it really helps us out. Um, stop by the new website. You can see all the episodes of That Leslie Sound in one place on the website. Also, the Tremolo series, the Shakedown Sound series, and new things coming. And I think with that... Oh, thank you to our members. Yes, thank you to our members. There's too many people to thank anymore. We do. I feel like they're going to get a shepherd's crook and play playoff music and just pull us off as we're giving our acceptance speeches here at the end. <laughs> with that. With that. I'm PJ on behalf of the beard, reminding no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. And I paused because as I was thinking about our tagline, you never have too much gear because you might have to combine two pedals to make the sound of another pedal that you might have already had. But now you're going to get these two pedals to make the pedal that sound like that pedal. Because you can never have too much gear because you could never do experiments like this. <laughs>